Well, I just set the chicken brick down and looks like they like it. Hopefully they don't poop all over it. And it looks like there's an egg and another one. Yes. Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. One first thing I wanted to show you guys is the tocobacana that I put out here two days ago. And I think I showed it in a video or so ago. And it was so yellow and white from being in the uh, control tunnel with the lids on them. You put them out here in the sunshine and they green up and start growing like crazy. So I had to do a tomato nutrient change today. And I was going through everything and getting my nutrients all measured out. And I have my um, what, tank one, tank two, which is my macro and my micronutrients. And then my pH adjust, which was fine. But I've realized I'm such an airhead. I ran out of the micro mix that goes into this barrel here, and it doesn't have all the nutrients that the tomato plants need. So I called Nathan Donnelly at Crop King, because Crop King is the one that came up with my lettuce formula here based on my source water. And I asked him if I could use my lettuce nutrients in here. He said it would work, but it's not going to have enough boron and magnesium in there. So he's going to work up a little formula so I can use this in here for now and add a little boron and magnesium so the tomato plants get all the supplements that they need. So here's my system of the dosing for the tomato plants. We have our dosatrons that we use, like I said, for tank A, tank B, and the pH adjust. We have our mixing pot here, and then we have our two probes. We have an EC probe and a uh, pH probe to make sure that we're dosing the correct amount of nutrients to the tomato and pepper plants and cucumber plants out there. And then they're all on timers up there. And so I have on times and off times and you can get them, um, program it so it's optimal for your plants. Because in the summertime, of course, you got to do more in the wintertime less. So you just kind of play with them and watch the plants and they'll let you know what they need. So I'm back here at my main nutrient tank here in the ground for my lettuce and all the NFT channels. It's time to do a change. I'm a little overdue. And the reason why you want to do the change is because the salts build up in the tank after a while. So you need to drain it down, get all fresh water in there and all new nutrients in there so you get all the salts out of there. So since this water still has some nutrients in it, when I pump it out, we pump it outside the greenhouse in the back here to a storage unit. And then Doug takes that to the hay fields and we fertilize our hay fields. So none of it gets wasted, doesn't get into the waterways. It's all used up here on the farm. So I kind of got a mess over here. We had to rearrange things um, for the sump pumps. The main sump pump that you see sitting here that has the green uh, line tied to it, that's the one that's always in the tank that I use to empty it when I do a nutrient change. But we put another sump pump, dropped it down there, so I could do my strawberries because my dosatron system was taken down because we didn't want it to freeze. And I noticed my strawberries weren't doing as well on just plain water, of course. So I decided to go ahead and pump some of that nutrient water over there. And what a difference it made. They're all perked up and happy again. So we'll make sure we keep these guys going. So we do have lots of nutrient, er, lots of sump pumps here because we have one in the crack that's down here that keeps the groundwater at a low level. So when I do a nutrient change, it, the groundwater doesn't come up and pop out the nutrient tank. And then we have one in the wet wall, and so I always like to have extra sump pumps around here because you never know when one's going to go out. So the, the crack that we have here, which is actually a culvert pipe that Doug drilled holes through so the water comes into it, that is actually three feet deeper than the nutrient tank there. And the reason being because the water table here is so high that that sump pump gets the water all around away from this whole area here, like I said. So when I do a nutrient tank change, I don't have to worry about this tank moving and messing up any of my piping. So what I'm going to do today is a quick nutrient change. I'm not going to turn the water off to the plants. I'm going to have it go down as far as it can and keep the main dolphin pump going to keep the water flowing to, to everybody. And then I'll just let the water trickle in nice and slowly so the chlorine dissipates out of the water since we do have city water. And I'll be ready to go again. So as the water is trickling into the tank there, the dosing system will be able to keep up with the amount of water coming in, so it'll keep my pH and my EC at perfect ranges for the plants. The nutrient tank is all pumped out now. I kept the water level just above the intake valve there so I don't lose prime over at my dolphin pump over here because I want to keep the water flowing to my NFT channel since it's a nice sunny day and I'd have wilty plants if I didn't have the water going. Fresh water is trickling in. You can kind of see it drip dropping in there. So it's going to take about five or six hours to get this totally filled up. I have the dosing system back on control, so the EC and the pH will keep up as the fresh water comes in. 
I always get questions about my recirculating system here for my NFT channels. So I thought I'd let you guys see what's going on in here. So down here is my berry tank, it's 1200 gallons. I keep this cover over it to keep the algae out and this has made a big difference. I've been doing it for like the last five years and it really makes a big difference to keep the algae from growing because the tank is, it's a light tank. So all the components here, Doug did all this plumbing for me. I did some help, you know, the balloon cleaner and stuff. But how it basically works is there's a foot valve down in the bottom of the pump there. I'm sorry, a foot valve bottom of the tank. And I have this dolphin pump that sucks the water up through it. Some of it goes back into the tank to recirculate it. And here that I can regulate that. And then the other part comes up through here and goes through this filter. And then it's pushed through these feed lines that go up to the NFT channels. There's also two other lines that come in and out of this tank. The one that comes in is the fresh water supply, which we have over there, and that's on a valve, a float. So it never overflows the tank. And then there's also a line that goes up to my mixing pot over by my nutrient uh, system up there. So it's always monitoring exactly what's in the tank there. And as then as the nutrients are pumped into the system, they come back into the tank and get circulated around. So here we are in the main part of the greenhouse, and these lines here on the floor are the feed lines that the dolphin pump is pushing the water up to. So it comes up here, and then it goes into the black tubes, and then into the spaghettis that go into the NFT channel. Then you're probably wondering, how does all this water get back to the tank? Well, on the other side over there, there's a four-inch line, it has holes drilled into it that the channels fit into, and this whole greenhouse is on a slope. So it naturally, with gravity, goes back to the nutrient tank so it can recirculate for me. So even though we're a small commercial greenhouse, you know, 5,000 square feet in here, and have the, the two bays, this is a system that you could put in your hobby greenhouse or even in your basement. All you have to do is make sure that your channels are set up on a slope, you slope down to your return lines, and then have everything slope back to your reservoir tank. It doesn't matter how big you are, the concept works the same. So here's my NFT channel. I wanted to show you the fitting that goes on the end of it. It's just a 45 that fits right on the end of it there. And these channels then slide across the braces. And you can tell it's kind of at a slope, so they go down. And then it fits right into the pre-drilled holes of the four inch pipe. So remember that return pipe goes all the way back to my reservoir tank. Now it's time again to do some seeding. So today for my CSA program, I'm doing Red Cloud. It's a tatsoi, which is an Asian green, but it's the red version of it. And per the package here, you can either have it for 21 days, grow it for 21 days for the baby size, or you can do full size at 45 days, which is a really nice plant with a nice big leaf. Well, I do some place right in the middle because then it's still small enough to put in your salad, but then big enough to make some soups or spring rolls or whatever else you want with it. So it's pretty versatile. And like always, I always use my handy dandy cedar from um, here, my green one, and just push the seeds in with the um, tab and put about 10 or 15 seeds in each one of the holes. So after I get these two trays seeded, I'm going to put them into the control tunnel where it's nice and warm so they'll sprout, so they'll be there about three days. Then I'll put them out in the greenhouse in the nursery channels, and they'll stay there for about 10 or 15 days, and then they'll go out into the NFTs. So I wanted to show you guys what I seeded earlier before I started the um, CSA program seeds. I got my spinach in here, I got a, uh, seven rows of that, and then I have some tarragon, some sage, some Thai basil, some cilantro, some dill, some other um, uh, Genevieve basil, but I like to use Eleonora. I don't know if you'd still get that one, but I like the Eleonora. And then I'm going to trial the uh, Napa cabbage. I use Minuet. I've grown it in the summertime, and sometimes in the summertime it gets the internal tip burn. And I haven't grown it in the winter for years, so I'm going to trial it and see if it works really good. And if it does, I'm going to put it in my CSA rotation. I'm back out here in the high tunnel with the strawberries. December, bright sunny day, and it is so warm in here, it's gotta be 80 some degrees. We've been watering the strawberries with the nutrient water from the lettuce mix, and these guys, look at how green and nice they're popping up. 
They're all really happy. And with it being so warm, I'm gonna have to water them two times. Usually when it's cloudy, I can just do it once a day, but I'm gonna have to do it twice today. So I've got all these nice big strawberries to pick here. So I'm gonna go through here and harvest them all and I'll let you know how many pounds I get. Wow, look at that guy. Mmm, really sweet. Well, it's mid-December. Just weighed these guys out. I got 13 pounds here, so that puts me up to 814 pounds for the whole season. Not too bad. So I plan on harvesting again on Monday morning, and that should put me about 10 to 12 pounds from what I left in there that wasn't quite ripe, I'm estimating. So that should put over 20 quarts for my CSA program. Now I want to keep the high tunnel going like I keep telling you guys the first of the year. So everything after Monday's harvest is going to be for us. I love freezing strawberries, so we have them all through the winter with, for smoothies and making desserts and putting them on my cereal. So that's our plan. So I came up to check out my cucumbers, and look at these guys, they're going crazy. So I better get harvesting and get these all picked off the vines here so I keep the crop going. So I think I'm going to end the video here. And like always, please leave me questions, comments, or suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next time.